saw was built by the Holland Brown Woodworking Machine Company out of St. Louis, Missouri. The patent date is 1883, but I think this one was probably made about 1915. It's a 36 inch bandsaw, model number two. It appears that it's done a lot of hard work in its life. There are a number of repairs and various upgrades. At some point, the Babbitt bearings were swapped out for ball bearing pillow blocks, which is a definite upgrade. This won't be a museum type restoration. I also intend to work the saw hard, so I'll be refreshing it and getting it ready for the next couple decades of use. trying to figure out how to align everything. Unfortunately, nothing is fixed. Everything has adjustment. So I don't really know where to start. Uh, I think I'm going to start at the top because this upper wheel has the least adjustment. Then I will position the lower wheel to be coplanar to it, which will give me two tangent points between the wheels, which I'm using this old blade, to align. So then I can adjust the blade guides, and then the table mount, the trunnion, to that plane. I think it's going to be a little bit off of vertical at that point, so I'm probably going to have to shift the lower wheel to create vertical, uh, which needs to align with this blade guide assembly in the same plane. Uh, and then work my way down. The lower wheel should be pretty easy. It has a trunnion on the back, uh, which gives it adjustment in every direction. Uh, so that's the plan. I've got some rough alignment done, but the blade is tracking pretty far back on both wheels. So uh, that means that the angularity of the wheels needs to be fixed. The upper blade guide that came with this saw is definitely not original. It's this kind of European style uh, roller guide. The lower blade guide assembly very well could be original. Uh, it's got no rollers, just got some uh, blocks for the guides here. And then, but the, the back guide, the thrust bearing basically was a, a McGill cam follower. I don't think that's existed for a hundred years, so this is probably a later addition. Uh, this one, you can see, has a groove from where the blade has been resting in it, and it actually got seized at some point, and the blade cut a groove 
uh, in one spot more than the others, so now it won't turn at all. So I've got a replacement here, brand new. The new blade has a much more aggressive tooth pitch, something like one and one and a half teeth per inch. Uh, and the reason for that is that I intend to use this big saw for mostly resawing uh, wide panels, which means it can cut a lot faster uh, and a lot wider boards without filling up the gullet with uh, sawdust. So the motor that came with this machine requires three-phase power. And I don't have three-phase power here in the shop. So I'm going to be using this variable frequency drive to convert my single-phase 220-volt power to three-phase. Uh, in addition to be able to, to convert that, I also am going to be able to do variable speed control. Uh, I can control how fast or slow it accelerates up to speed or decelerates when I turn it off. Uh, and a whole bunch of other functions that I'm not even going to be scratching the surface with uh, here in this application. First power on. Let's see how it goes. third speed.
I know what you're thinking, and you're right. This thing is a meat grinder. My biggest fear about this thing is that the blade is going to break or come walking off the wheel. So I'm going to be putting some kind of shielding to contain the blade if it does come off on both wheels. Uh, and another thing I'm really scared of is this return leg of the blade. This is a big long stretch of open blade which would catch and then suck you right into the wheel. Uh, so that would be very terrible. So we're going to be shielding this, at least in some minimal way. So that's the plan. As soon as I learn to weld. So, you know, soon.